MSNBC's Joanne Reed slams CNN host Anderson Cooper's defense of last week's Trump Town Hall on the network. You know, that is what you call a straw man argument, especially that the, the only two options available to you are listening to a former president mock a woman a jury found that he sexually abused while the audience laughs and applauds, or pretending 74 million Americans who voted for Trump don't exist. But that has become a familiar tune, mainly from billionaire libertarians like Elon Musk and billionaire media moguls like Fox's Rupert Murdoch, that free speech doesn't just mean what the First Amendment says it means, that the government cannot restrict or require certain speech, but rather that unless you are willing to subject yourself personally to the farthest right, most virulently racist, misogynistic, and offensive viewpoints, just fill your psyche with it online, in the university lecture hall, or on CNN, you're against free speech. The Views' Sunny Hostin also had some criticism about Cooper's defense. I think that you don't give a bigot and a racist and a misogynist and a liar and a cheater and a sexual abuser and a, a defamer a platform of three million people. And I'm saddened. Uh, I used to work for CNN for quite some time. Anderson Cooper has been my friend for over 20 years. And I'm saddened that he tried to gaslight me yesterday by saying that people are in silos. People aren't living in a silo. They are choosing to listen to the lies or not. So uh, what, do you, what do you make of this, Liz? Is Are these commentators right that there's something that's jumped the shark about what it means to have free speech or to be open to other people's viewpoints? Is this a kind of misapplication of the princ that principle, trying to lump it on to what happened at the CNN town hall? What, what's going on here? So much of the free speech discourse is uh, incredibly clumsy, frankly. And I see that happening with uh, with Joanne Reed. And I see this also happening with Sonny Hostin and many of the, the ladies on The View. I mean, there is a people who are concerned about free speech are fundamentally, first and foremost, I believe, concerned about uh, government suppression of speech and you know things explicitly uh, prohibited by the First Amendment. But there is also this other thing, which is culture of free speech. It is what types of viewpoints are people exposed to? In which types of environments are they exposed to them? Um, are we free speech maximalists with what we allow um, to exist on different platforms on the internet. And so, you know, what, whether or not Twitter is, is banning somebody uh, and suppressing their speech or not, that's not really a First Amendment related issue. That's a culture of free speech issue. And it, it really bothers me when I see people uh, muddy the waters on this front. Um, I think it is very important to have a free speech maximalist mindset uh, and to make it so that as many people can be exposed to Trump's viewpoints as possible, in part because I trust that they're not rubes and they're not idiots. And, you know, they will see a lot of Trump's absurdity and hyperbole and lies for what they are. Some people are susceptible and compelled by Trump's views. And I'm not sure that any amount of MSNBC hectoring or, um, you know, antagonism from the ladies on The View will change those those views. Uh, so, it, you know, I, I very much come down to a free speech maximalist perspective where we need to be able to hear all kinds of views, a very, very wide range, and then decide for ourselves, because we are autonomous individuals, what is compelling to us. Yeah, I'm kind of confused here because it, as far as I understand it, Elon Musk didn't force CNN to host a Trump town hall. So I really don't understand. I understand there's an ongoing argument about a culture of free speech absolutism and what that means. And, and there's some judgments that go back and forth about how the left doesn't really care about free speech because it objects to certain kinds of speech on a principled basis, even if it doesn't want them to be actually suppressed. And these, this bickering goes on online. But it seems to me that what drove the decision to have Donald Trump do a town hall on CNN was CNN's much discussed bad ratings and them doing the same kind of ratings grab that so many networks did back in 2016 and which so many people I think are looking forward to in this Trump 2024 run as legacy media struggles in this particular historical moment. So it does seem like these hosts are displacing blame here when ultimately the, the, the onus, whatever you thought about the scene in town hall. The, it, it lies at the feet, the responsibility lies at the feet at Chris Lick, CEO, and people like Anderson Cooper, who not only have participated in this, but defended it. And we should probably read what Anderson Cooper actually said, given that Sonny Hostin was responding directly to his remarks. 
Cooper said, um, you have every right to be outraged today and angry and never watch this network again, but do you think staying in your silo and only listening to people you agree with is going to make that person go away? Yeah, to me, that's really stunning that that is a controversial thing to say. And and the degree to which Sonny Hostin is uh, sort of rejecting the premise that people exist in political silos is uh, entirely stupid and crazy. I mean, if you look at the work of uh, people like Jonathan Haidt, uh, who wrote The Righteous Mind years ago, it is very focused on this like elephant writer type concept, this idea that people sort of have these very tribal political affiliations. And, um, you know, I, I highly recommend that book for, for more on that. But this idea that they almost have this like, moral political intuition and then they fit in all the facts to follow and justify that later on. And so it's, it's this very emotional, very tribal process. Um, but the fact that people exist in their political silos is I think pretty hard to take issue with. Uh, and I think it's, there's something kind of jarring to the fact that Sonny Hostin or somebody who is, um, you know, a prominent liberal in the media is acting like is, is attempting to tell you know, people like me, that my viewpoints are well represented in the media. Like I am a, a pro-life feminist, right? Like, is that viewpoint actually represented in much of the mainstream media? I really, I don't personally see it. And I am looking for that type of thing. Um, you know, I see predominant pro-choice media bias. And so for her to say that, you know, and that's just using that as one example for her to say that all viewpoints are represented here and that people aren't operating in their political silos is, I think, totally incorrect. Uh, and I think the fact that there are legions of people who would dispute that, who are of the opposite political persuasion as, persuasion as her, is evidence uh, that she's wrong. Well, to push back, I don't know that the argument that Sunny is making is that people aren't in political silos. I think that she's rightly pointing out that Cooper's statement sort of misses the point. The, criti the criticism isn't that I mean, to be sure, some people said absolutely CNN shouldn't do a Trump, uh, Trump town hall at all. You shouldn't platform mm -hmm. Trump, that kind of argument. And I completely agree that that's ridiculous. And I think there's a lot of benefit into poking through political silos by doing exactly what CNN did. But I do think that being the case, there's still room for a critique of how CNN managed the town hall. I, as we discussed but in earlier blogs. that's not what Sonny was saying. I'm sorry? Right? But that's not the, that's not what Hostin was critiquing. Well, no, well, she was saying that um, Anderson Cooper was gaslighting her by making this an issue of who's in a political silo, when I don't think that that necessarily is the, the total of the criticism of what happened in the CNN town hall. I, I, and I would mm. agree with Anderson Cooper that people who objected to it on, on the basis that it should not do it point blank period are wrong. But I would disagree with um, uh, Anderson Cooper to the extent that he is collapsing the critique into this one narrow one, when I think there's plenty to be said about how CNN handled the situation. Yeah, I think it's a little bit tough to figure out what Hostin is saying. The thing that I am reacting to, especially that I find to be completely tired, just this tired rehashing of what we did for, you know, the better part of two years, the first time Trump ran for president is, um, or actually specifically while he was in office for those entire four years, you know, the laundry listing that she was doing for rhetorical, like dramatic effect was driving me absolutely crazy. You know, listing off, you know, a sexual abuser, a known liar, an election denier, all these things. And it's like your audience, like we've already sort of established this, right? But you are doing this for dramatic effect and to attempt to make a, you know, deplatforming case. And the fact of the matter is he is a powerful person seeking political office in the United States. Uh, you know, I think some amount of platforming is, is very appropriate. Uh, and I'm sort of, there, there's this, like really, really dramatic pearl clutching hand wringing that happens. And, and her laundry listing like that is I think evidence of that. I do think that, um, Joy Reed's description of Elon Musk as a billionaire libertarian, I took great issue with, because I think you're totally right. A, he's not the one making these decisions. Uh, he is the Twitter CEO and pretty bad at it, might I add. Um, he's not, you know, a, a head honcho at CNN making these calls. But also, I don't know if he's really much of a free speech maximalist anymore, really like considers himself that much of a libertarian. He is very interested in bending to the will of um, regimes in India and China and sort of attempting to uh, censor people if that is the way that he can stay in their good graces. So I think it's very important to um, be clear about that and to not have such a, an American centric viewpoint when it comes to that. I think he's actually really compromised a lot of his formerly free speech bona fides. I think that's an excellent point, Liz. All right, we'll have more rising for you right after this.